there's it doesn't sound like a long time but you get a lot of information in that month and there's still some of the guys we haven't seen still in person so uh, we'll go out and do that next week see a couple more quarterbacks and then um, we'll do visits with them we'll do zoom calls we'll do a lot of different things so uh, we're far from our answer it's been really interesting because everybody's always trying to figure out especially at the top of the graph what the other teams are doing when i've had conversations here with executives for other teams who know adam peters well know the situation well the most popular answer for what they do at number two is jj mccarthy New GM Adam Peters and brand new head coach Dan Quinn have done such a great job this offseason and in my opinion the commanders are if not the most one of the most improved teams going into next season just looking at what they've done in free agency however with that being said there's still a lot of work that needs to be done I mean first of all who are they going to take with the number two overall pick? Do they keep the number two overall pick or do they trade back? And over the past few weeks, I mean, there have been rumors spiraling around the NFL who some people may think they know exactly what Adam Peters is going to do. We already saw that short clip where, you know, Tom Pelissero says they're going all in on J.J. McCarthy, but others say they're not done looking. They still look at Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Bo Nix. They're going to be taking their next couple of weeks here very seriously. Real quickly, we're going to deep dive into everything you need to know about who the commanders could take or why or what direction they could be heading in in the NFL draft. Before we get into that, comment down below, who do you want the commanders to take? Do you buy the hype around the JJ McCarthy news or do you think it's all just a smokescreen to l let them be able to land their guy at two or maybe even trade back to three and have someone trade up to two to take JJ McCarthy? What do you think is going to happen? Let me know. But without any further ado, let's hear a little bit about or from, I should say, JJ McCarthy and what he thought about the commander's first meeting. Just the overall energy, you know, I, it was my first one. So I was like super nervous, I'm not going to lie, and uh, sweating a little bit. And, you know, Coach Quinn was just awesome. I got to talk to uh, Mr. Peters right before the meeting. And, you know, just a great vibe, very welcoming. And, you know, going through the clips and everything. And Coach Cliff Kingsbury was just like, hey, if you get a matchup out here and you really like it, could you just, you know, switch it to a go on the outside? And I was telling him, like, I wish. Just little stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it was just great to meet them, great to, you know, talk ball with them. And I had a lot of fun doing it. Now, before the last few days here, I feel like there wasn't too much hype around J.J. McCarthy to the Commanders. And again, I'm not sure if that's a smokescreen or if this is something that could actually happen at number two. I'm not really sure. However, what I am sure of is J.J. McCarthy is a quarterback you'd want on your football team. He's got leadership traits on and off the field. He can make any throw even though he wasn't really asked to do it in college. He is still a guy that you'd want on your football team as good arm strength, um, can do everything you need him to do on the football field. And that's something that he's proven when he's asked to do so. Now, it is a little bit scary because I think he's raw and I don't think he could be a day one starter, uh, but also has the ability to make some moves on his legs or with his legs as well. So I don't mind JJ McCarthy's fit here, but real quickly, let's look at some of his film and see if we think he would be a good fit. Before we do that though, make sure you guys do me a big favor, hit the like button. If this video gets up to 400 likes, I will post non-stop commanders videos for the rest of the offseason, free agency, the draft, mini camp, training camp, everything you need to know going into next season. But also subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's free, doesn't cost anything to subscribe. So make sure you guys join the family. Let's get right into some film. All right, now this play specifically gives me some hope that this dude could be a baller in the NFL. So we're gonna get a play fake here to the running back. He's gonna read the defense and feel the pressure coming off the right side. So what he's going to do is break around it. Boom, has that breakaway speed to get away from some of these edge rushers, which is something I think could be utilized here in Commanders and Cliff Kingsbury's offense, right? So gets out to the right while being chased on the run and look at this throw, gets as far right as he can, waits for a man to get open and throws an absolute dot. Wow, I mean, that is a throw you love to see. And if he was over here with the commanders with guys like Terry McLaurin, John Dotson, right? They bring in Zach Ertz, who, who could be a safety net for them. They'll, then you have Austin Eckler. Then you have a guy, um, you know, in, you know, Brian Robinson, who's a real good running back in, in the short areas. I, I think J.J. McCarthy would be a really good fit. And that throw proves the man can make the plays on his legs as well. Let's look at some of the ones that maybe he was stationary. 
All right, and here's one of the biggest plays I've seen that's been blowing up around the NFL. Everyone looks at this play and says that he knew this was going to happen. And trust me, you'll know what I'm talking about in a second. But right away, we're going to see pre-snap motion by your wide receiver, okay? Once you see the DB... Um, who is playing about five yards off coverage. Once he travels with them, we know that this is man-to-man -man coverage, right? Now, this route is going to be a crosser um, over the middle of the field. So the first thing we notice is it's man-to-man. -man. The next next thing we need to break down here if you're JJ McCarthy is the safeties. What are the safeties going to do here? You can see this safety is taking approach where he's taking the deeper third of the field. This safety is playing more of the, the, ver uh, the vertical zone, right? So right away, we notice that and we think he's going to be playing up. We want this cross over the top so boom what he does in according to multiple people um you know i don't know if they're right or wrong but they said they knew or jj mccarthy knew because of film study that he knew the safety was going to turn around here because if he didn't turn around it would have been an easy interception throws it absolute dot okay absolute dot now wait until you watch the other angle here i think they do show okay so boom this is what I want to show you guys. Now, in my opinion, if he knew that he was going to turn around, that is insane, right? If he didn't know he was going to turn around, this is a terrible throw, okay? This would be a terrible throw. However, it gets there. It's a touchdown. No, no one's going to look back and be like, listen, what a bad throw. You know what I mean? So here we go. Again, you got that pre-snap motion. We're reading the safety. According to his film study, he knew at this point in time he was going to turn around. If he doesn't turn around, this is probably, I mean, that's just great timing, right? Throws it. It would have been maybe the easiest interception of that dude's career, but gets a touchdown anyway. I mean, let me know what you guys think about that play specifically. But outside of J.J. McCarthy, there's also Jaden Daniels. Now, I would talk a little bit more, break down some more film on J.J. McCarthy. feel like the video might be getting a little bit too long at this point. So if you guys want a full J.J. McCarthy film review for the Commanders, let me know in the comments down below by commenting the number one. But with that being said, let's talk a little bit about Jaden Daniels, who is going to spend a lot of time with Dan Gwynn and Adam Peters once his pro day hits. We're going to know a lot more about this situation as well. Let's hear what J.J. McCarthy actually said about his initial meeting with the Commanders. I remember just how cool uh, the whole staff was. Obviously, uh, Dan Quinn, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, all those type of guys. I was able to sit in there and really just get to know people. Uh, you know, you, you can see them on TV, see everybody coaching uh, behind the scenes. So be able to go on there and just have a, a conversation with them. That's the coolest part for me. All right, guys. So this is my, this is unbelievable. This is amazing play by Jaden Daniels. And one of the main reasons I think he might even be the best quarterback of the draft, okay? So right away, we're gonna notice his mobility and his pocket awareness, right? So we got pressure off the edge, 53 gets absolutely burned off the edge. Boom, look at that quick little step up, gets around. And now same play we saw from JJ McCarthy, gets out the pocket, has the speed, the breakaway speed to get away from some of these edge rushers. But now, watch the effortlessness of this throw, right? Notices a guy, looks to the right, trying to get the DBs to bite down. But in reality, he knows the whole time where he's going. This football lobs it up, right? Lobs it up and look at the accuracy of this ball. I mean, you do not see this from a lot of quarterbacks, right? Now, I know they're, I don't know who they're playing. Is it Vanderbilt? I don't even know. But with that being said, the effortlessness of this throw, just lob it up there and know exactly perfect throw. I mean, this is un believable unreal ends up going a, a pretty far away i mean dude you can't tell me jane daniels doesn't look like an absolute stud from just that throw alone but let's watch another one okay now jj mccarthy is going to drop back in the pocket now what i love about jj is he's not a guy who is run first but he's definitely run second now what i mean by that is he will be a guy who goes through his progression so right away looking 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 you tell me right he could definitely throw this ball I, I think you can get that there he could throw this one as well so there are guys open i feel like sometimes he needs to understand that yeah you could throw these balls to feel comfortable throwing some of these footballs because you have guys open right but I, I think he needs to develop in that category but at the same time look at what he does you know we've got pressure coming off the edge maybe panics a little bit i think cliff kingsbury could be a coach that really 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 helps him out in these senses but at the same time you know even when he doesn't make the greatest reads in terms of throwing the ball he can still make plays on his leg so the first thing that the initial thing you want to see out of your quarterback is at least make a read and try to make a throw i don't think he tried to make a throw but he definitely had the second thing on lock right he has the ability to get outside the pocket and absolutely 
demolish defenses, right? Gets around the edge, you're way too slow. Boom, let's hit that hole, splits the defense, and here we go. Now we're getting up the right side. Great key blocks here by some wide receivers, some running backs, and there goes Jaden Daniels up the right sideline for an absolutely massive pickup. Now, again, listen, I don't want to say this is perfect because he had guys open, open over the middle. Now, I, I don't know what he did here or why he was so hesitant to throw this football because you have someone wide open over the middle. I don't know what the down is. I don't know, um, you know, if it's late in the game or whatnot. So I don't know the scenario here, but obviously you're probably not going to run like a levels concept if it's the last play of the game. So I don't really know. I think Jaden Daniels is a good job here getting outside the pocket and making plays on his feet, but also needs to have the confidence to throw the football at times as well. All right, here we go. On this play specifically, what Jaden Daniels does is read the one deep safety look. Now, it's probably man to man. Could be a zone look, but we got to figure it out very quickly on this play. So here we go. Jaden Daniels in the shotgun, drops back in the pocket. First read is to look at the DBs on this side of the field, and then this safety, boom, checks it, checks it, checks it. Now, what he notices is when you're looking at this side of the field, you try to get this safety a bite down just a little bit, leaving this one-on-one -on -one matchup, right? So, boom, does it a little bit. Safety does a really good job not biting too far over to the left while Jane Daniels is, um, and I'll show you guys one more time, right? And you see it a lot in with quarterbacks in the NFL, right? They'll, they'll see the one safety. They'll notice they have a one-on-one -on -one down here, and quarterbacks like Pat Mahomes and a lot of quarterbacks, especially like Jordan Love, right? They do a really good job looking left, trying to draw the safety that way, right? Now, Jane Daniels does a perfect job doing that. I think he needed to sell it for maybe another second or two, turns his head too quickly, and now the safety makes that jump to the right side, but ends up throwing the ball anyway, right? So you could definitely do a better job getting that safety to the opposite side of the field, but look at the throw, man. As all the talent in the world to make every throw you need, Man, I, I think Jane Daniels has the tools, the talent, the skill set to be a really good quarterback. And with Cliff, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, dude, he could be insane. Now, with that being said, Adam Peters has a big decision to make. And before we end off this video, I do want to show you one more clip about Adam Peters um, talking about whether or not he wants to trade up, stay patient, trade down, um, you know, whatever it comes to with that number two overall pick, right? Uh, before we head out of here, though, let me know in the comments down below, who, what quarterback do you want the commanders to draft? Obviously, Drake May is a part of this as well. Maybe they go Drake May at two. We've heard early in the offseason that Drake May is a guy they like as well. So, man, they could have, they could do anything. They could trade back. They can acquire more picks. Um, they could stay patient and, and take their guy number two, which could be JJ. It could be Jane Daniels. It could be Drake May. Who really knows, right? Uh, but hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, join the family, comment down below who you want the quarterback to be. Uh, but man, Commanders have done such a good job this offseason. Uh, really, really, really putting the hammer down and getting better in the offseason for agency period. They've done a really good job. What will they do in the draft? I guess we're going to talk about it later. And we'll continue to cover the Commanders as we go forward. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. When you were with the Niners, you were parts of big trades up and big trades back. Yeah. When you, when you look at that number two overall pick, how do you balance the, the player you can get there versus the haul you could get for it if you're trying to build through the draft? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a big decision, obviously, but I think just like anything we do, it's about what's best for us, right? So if the best thing for us is to stand pat, then we'll stand pat, and, but you're always going to listen to all the different possibilities, trading up, trading back, no matter where you're at, pick, you know, 36, 40, 67, 7,800. So you're always going to look, okay, what are the best things for us? Weigh all the different possibilities and make the best decision you think for us at the time.